room for a couple more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Summer's the time y'all do all that because he's got to work during the year. Wow. He he's retired. He did? When he's did retarded. Start? He's been retarded well about three years now, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He is? Yeah. He's retarded about three years now. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, they should be. They should be. I thought you were still teaching. Oh no. No, no. They kick him out they kick him out at seventy two, so <laughs> Yeah, really <laughs> By the way, here it comes. Hey, let me go ahead. I, I think it's, uh, yes, we're, we're streaming, so we're good to go. Let me just go ahead and start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this evening. Again, that we get to take a look at, at fun. We get to take a look at laughter because it, it lets us release and enjoy your word. Uh, there's so many times that we do have to take things so seriously, but yet at the same time, we get to relieve that tension with laughter, and we're so thankful for that. Lord, I want to lift up the Bonner family. Uh, for the loss of their patriarch this weekend, just give them the strength that they're going to need as they continue moving on for Robert and Russell, the two boys, and of course for for Jackie and all the rest of the extended family that uh, that they have been taking care of him for so long. We just ask that you hold them uh, close in your arms and give them those uh, those hugs. Lord, I just ask you to open our hearts and minds tonight as we just continue to explore your word and have a great time. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I'm going to launch it real quick this evening. Good evening. You weren't here last week, so you get, you get the, the second edition of the Terry Show. So no, it'll be great. No differences. Everything's the same. So if you notice the picture behind me, and i got to see, it's probably not going to work quite right. I think I do have to edit something over here. Pardon me for a second. got to shrink this just a little bit. Bye, guys. And hit transition. Okay. I had to shrink down the video so that the uh, people online would be able to see this later. So... In our Romans class that we have on Tuesday nights, we brought up some ages and some some things that were going on, and I thought I'd share this tonight because it kind of gives you a view as to how close and how many years things were close together. What is there something? No, it's my bad. Idea. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, I'm sorry, didn't mean to. Yeah. You know. So it starts with Adam at zero. If you see this, and it shows this the number of years in his life. Uh, being 930 years, and so then he passes, and he was no more. But then it, Seth, is, he was born at 130. We see Enos was born uh, at, in the year 235. So if you subtract that, uh, Seth was 105 years old. You can get the age if you wanted to work it that way. It doesn't show that. So it continues to explore it out. And where we were talking about is we were talking about Abraham, and you see that if you look at Seth, uh, well, Shem, excuse me, and I'm going to have to stand up here to do this. Yes, I'm short. I didn't bring my stick. If you look at Shem, we see him right here. Now, Shem was one of the four boys, one of Noah's four boys. Mm -hmm. Found one. Huh? Found one. Found one. Oh, sorry. Shem right here. My apologies. So the big thing is, is you see in 2006, year 2006, Noah passes. Abraham is born in the year 2008. If you look at Shem, one of the one of the sons, we see this and look down here, right here. He, Shem was still alive. The same time Shem died in 2158, and Abraham died in 2183. So there was there's so much overlap, and it's basically 351 years from the time of the flood to the time of Abraham being born. Think about that. Mm -hmm. 350 years. That's so life. one of the questions that was brought up is like, well, how long would Abraham have uh, have known of God? It's only been 350 years since God flooded the earth. Yeah. You know, and Shem, one of the four boys, and Noah were alive for so long after that time frame. They, they kept praising the Lord. I'm sure they did. Listen to what you know. Listen to what the Lord did for us. And they weren't the only ones talking about it, but. Right, there were three. Still, you got to remember. You're right, because there were there were two more brothers. Mm -hmm. There was Noah, and then all four of their wives. All of them shared the same mm -hmm. tale. Mm -hmm. And the flood is one of those things that is spread out through every, almost every. I don't want to say 100 percent because I can't say 100 percent, but almost every single uh, culture has a report and a story of a giant world flood. Mm -hmm. And the earth proves it. And the Earth does prove it. It's really cool. If you ever watched that uh, that movie, is is Genesis real or history? Yeah. History. Thank you. 
Um, I think we need to watch that again at church. I'd love to come in and watch it again. It's such an awesome movie, and if you haven't seen his Genesis history, it's about uh, 90 ish minutes long, but it shows you, you know, the whole, uh, was it Pan Pangea, the the whole world. If you look, oh wow, that that continent looks like it fits with this continent and this continent. Mm -hmm. Well, they do, mm -hmm. and they were probably all they were all one continent in the original when the Lord created everything. Mm -hmm. But during the flood, He moved it all. And it's proven when you look at the way the, the rock layers are across the United States right. alone. Let's mention other continents. You have the same rock layer mm -hmm. that exists from Mexico all the way up to almost New England. Right. And the only way all of this happens is if it's all done at once. Right. It's just the exactly. way it goes. And so if you haven't seen it, it's a great movie. If you want to see it, uh, remind me, remind Michael, and I'll be happy to host it, if you will. Uh, here at the church and and have it's it. Called so. Genesis? Genesis it's called Genesis. Genesis is Genesis history. Yeah, that is, that is Genesis history. So it used to be on uh, Netflix, and then it fi they finally rolled it off there, and the church has purchased or has a copy of the the DVD. I and think we found it on Prime. Oh, good. We it very well may be. Let's yeah, you I know what. Saved it on as soon as I can find my mouse here, I will look real quick, and then we can move on to other things. It is warm in here. Uh, is what now? Right outside that door to the left. Don't put it down on 70. It's right temperature. <laughs> yeah, 68 is fine. I brought it. <laughs> see, so what are we worried about? Where to watch it at? So let's see. Um, it is free on Amazon Prime right now. Um, so, yeah. So if you have Amazon Prime, you'd be able to watch it. Is Genesis History. Uh, and be able to watch it. We can still host it here at the church, or when things get to a, a settling point, I'll be happy to have people over to my house. I plan on that. We got a big projection screen that takes up our whole wall. Wow. Well, come on over tonight. We'll, set, we'll all set, we'll set up. <laughs> but uh, so, Amazon Prime, it is on Amazon Prime. So, I mean, we could watch it tonight. No, I'm just <laughs> But anyhow. Mary, I think I said, I really like it. Well, thank you. If I hadn't seen it before, I'm excited. Well, thank you. I try to, I try to, I have a few of them that I try to. I've painted it for Teacher's bed. <laughs> Teacher's bed. <laughs> you would know, anyhow. But. <laughs> I'm sorry. Terry, if you put an apple on your table, don't eat it. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Anyhow. All right, so let's get away from the pig. Sorry, I was showing pictures of my daughter's uh, uh, things. Okay, so let me get rid of. Let me get rid of this. We're gonna make that go away. Or maybe that go away. This. I'm not sure what you guys are gonna see. You should guys should just see a purple screen up there and some just a PowerPoint slide. That's all. It's really, if I turn off the TV, it's gonna change a whole bunch of things for the online people. So you get to look at that right now. So thoughts. What do you guys want to talk about tonight? Shopping at uh, NFM. Shopping at NFM. I didn't go, but I hear it's a heck of a good experience, and it costs a lot of money. Next. Yeah. <laughs> um, confession and repentance. Confession and repentance. I had a feeling those questions were going to come up tonight. I watched uh, Mr. Ellis's mm -hmm. uh, sermon this afternoon. You know, we used to have this rule that if you preached on Sunday, you were well, supposed to be here Monday to be able to. Uh, he said he was going to try because he got to go. I know he's got something on Monday nights that's not because he used to be a, a very uh, a regular here quite often. So I will do my best to give you my understanding of of all of that. So uh, I should probably write this down, or I will forget so it hold me true to anything. So what do you want first? I guess the the process, the reasoning, and the understanding behind confession. First. The process, the reasoning, and the understanding. Uh, and that's that's mainly because I come from a different background. Yes, you come from you can say Catholic background because okay. that one's from Catholic in the blue shirt. Al is, yeah, Sheila. Who else? Yeah. So I mean, so we don't hold it against you. Things. Yeah, they tried to make Ruth, and she she tried to conform, uh, change it. So let me uh, let me start with confession. Okay, so 
in the Catholic base faith, I'll I'll put it to point of reference as the best I can for for you at this moment, just because. In the Catholic faith faith, who do you confess to? So in the Catholic the priest. Yeah. You could right because they have said that you have to come to the priest and then the priest takes it to God. Okay. However, if you read the gospel, what does the gospel tell us? Straight to God. You get to go straight to God, bypass the priest, and, and go straight to God. You have that relationship behind there. Now, why would we want to confess our sins? The biggest reason to confess our sins is to acknowledge them before the Son and before the Father. Uh, you know, speeding on the freeway if you wanted to, or whatever you might, maybe you had bad thoughts because. I don't know, one of your kids spilt milk, and I, I don't know. I, I know you have kids, that's just why I went there. But, I mean, not every thought in our head is geared towards Christ. Unfortunately, we live in a fallen world. We are fallen people. And so sometimes our thoughts lean towards, you know, you cut me off again. I'm going to run my car in, you know, my 1978 Chevy Impala into your little freaking Ford UU. It ain't going to live, so, right? I don't know. But you get, my, you get my, my drift on that. So that's why we need to confess. We don't need to go to anyone else. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you, don't, you cannot come to someone else. Um, Michael made the comment. I'm going to call him Mike just to keep Mike and Michael separate. Sorry, Mike. Um, I'm gonna, Mike made the comment of going to an elder in the church. Now, that is something we do not have a, a position of in this church. But we do have elders, and the way that Michael defines that is people who are strong and have been in the Word for a while or have a knowledge in an area that uh, you may be having questions for. Uh, now, that could very easily be Danny. He's very deep into the knowledge. It could be me. I've been called in as an elder before, and that was years ago when I was, was younger, but it was an area that I would be able to give answers to. Uh, I'm sure that Mr. Self is called in, and I'm sure some of the other gentlemen here have, may have been called in. So while other churches uh, have what they would term as an elder or a deacon, uh, maybe, there it's a position in the church. Whereas we don't have that here, we have elders that are needed or called upon as needed because extra guidance and extra discussion needs to be done. And Michael will pull in different people to have that discussion with them. So that's the elders. So you don't need to confess to anyone but the Father and the Son. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Yeah, I want to make sure I said it right. So, um, and what was, see, I didn't get the other one, confession and repentance, right? Yes. Okay. I want to, I'm just writing them down for my own, so I stay on track. Repentance, I would really say, is almost the same thing as a confession. The difference is, is when you confess your sin, you're like, Father, uh, I stole the dozen eggs. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, repentance follows after that in the sense that now you have acknowledged what you did wrong. And repentance is you're not going to do it anymore. You are supposed to stay away from doing that. Okay. So that means you're not going to go over to Thor's chickens and steal any more eggs and blame it on the snake. You can't do that. Um, I have no idea if he has chickens. It's just I was looking at Thor when I said it. But that's the whole point, though, right? You're not. You're gonna go to the store and pay the five dollars for a dozen. What are they now? Three fifty. I have something like that. But you're gonna. You're gonna buy your eggs. You're not gonna. And that's the whole point. So you're confessing it, and then the repentance side of it is you're not gonna be doing it anymore. You know. So does that mean you're still gonna do it? Well, maybe you're not gonna steal Thor's eggs anymore. You're gonna go over and steal Mike Self's eggs. I don't. But you're not supposed to do that either. So. <laughs> But my, my, if you take them out of my work refrigerator, I wouldn't eat them because they've been in there too long. But the whole point of the matter is, is, is that repentance is where you're sorry for what you did and you will work on correcting it so that you don't do it anymore or do that life, right? The whole, the whole goal of repentance is to acknowledge your sin and strive to be more Christ-like. I think cute right there, the premiere right there, is, and I kind of thought to myself, not so much, uh, we'll do it again because you may want, but you don't want to do it again. You're sorry for doing it. Correct. One yeah, day you go. Hey, I did this. And I did, especially like, for Travis, you go do the thing. And, but it doesn't mean anything. It's like a lot of stuff that I've seen, and, and that, where it's just, things are just spoken. And also with you. you know, 
but not anything that has any meaning. So right. confession can be like that too. Even if, even if you're not Catholic, you're just confessed because you think you're supposed to. But so I don't really feel bad about it. But I feel like I'm supposed to confess. Right, and that would be the a non, you know, non. And, yeah, you you want to have a right heart. Yeah, and so that's the big thing. I, I think you're absolutely right. Thank you, Mike, for sorry for focus. And when he was talking about elders, it wasn't in, in relation to the confession. It was the afterwards, to, if somebody wanted someone to pray with them. Well, right, but, but the, the confession thing, and I believe it is also, if you had a, an area where you were you're having trouble, and you confess it to God, but I don't know if it's just something that I've kind of been taught, or if it's actually in there. What you can actually go to someone who you consider a brother. Almost like they would be your uh, accountability partner. Yeah, I've absolutely. I've got this issue. I want to share this with you, and I would like help, you know, and overcome yeah. that, that kind of thing. So that's yeah. not a bad thing, you know, that you can do there. But Correct. yeah, I think like he says, it's between you and God, you know. And I, it even says in here, there's only one intercessor mm -hmm. with, between us and God, and that's Christ. Jesus Christ. And he and and Mike brought that up at the end of his sermon. When he was talking about that, that Christ will stand in between us and the Father, because mm -hmm. the Father isn't is going to see all that sin. Mm -hmm. The Father is black and white when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. However, the Son is the one that says, "No, no, I've already taken that on. It's not theirs." Mm -hmm. And the Father goes, "You're right. I can't see it. Right? I mean, however, however, they're going to. That's what. That's the way it's written in how I I, I look at it. So." So when the father then looks at us, let's say he blinks his eyes and looks at us again, oh, well, look, there's no sin there. So, yes, you can receive your white robe, you know, you're a size two and a half or whatever. Doesn't Sorry. repent also mean turn around? Yes. Yes, you, yeah. you turn away from doing it, yeah. And that's how, when you were talking about the apes, I was going to say to repent, repent would kind of mean you're not going to walk by the chicken coop anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, it could be. Yeah, because that's a temptation, way, yeah. right? Get away from whatever it is. That, so like yeah. we talked like we talked about last week, uh, you know, stay away. From, I think it was in here. Stay away from something that a brother that tempts you or a, an act that tempts you. Well, if your your physical brother, your actual brother, he's the one who's like, hey, come on, Patrick, we got we got to go steal some eggs. Mom needs some eggs, and I want an omelet in the morning. Well, if you, you you're going to want to stay away from him, right? Because he's leading you down a path that you should not be. And he has a good reason why. He the omelet, yeah, absolutely. So, but I'm thinking Thor's going to go. So uh, you know, I know that Thor does understand how to use. Yeah, he understands how to use a firearm, and he can shoot from a long ways away. So, anyhow, I'm just, just Sam. Um, Either that would be a vegetarian. Let's no, let's not discuss that. That would last. <laughs> does that does that help you along? Yes. Okay. So on that, is there scripture for like basically if you? Seek repentance, but you continue to, I guess, stumble over and over and over and over. And or so, just going back to the forgiveness of sin. And so, Paul talks about, kind of talks about that exact thing in Romans mm -hmm. two and Romans three, about going over. What you got for? First John one nine. But if we confess our sins to Him, it is, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from our wickedness. And then James five sixteen is confess your sins to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. Uh, Even what, as you said, John said, you know, he he stumbled a lot yeah. with some of the same the same issue. We don't know exactly what that was. Yeah, Paul had a thorn in his side that we don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah like, I've seen examples of it. Yeah. I couldn't recollect like if there was ever like a listing like a repercussion for anything. Well, okay, so there is some other repercussions, and I'll be honest, without looking it up real fast, I. Would, I wouldn't have that exact verse for it, but that Paul says, I'm pretty sure it's Paul, says that if a brother just keeps stumbling, let him go. You know, you can try to correct him, but let him go because he's going to drag others, you know, possibly yourself and others down. Sir. In Proverbs 23, 13, or 28, 13, it says, people who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. So, so turn to them. You know, you're, what you're asking about, you know, you turn away from it. I mean, but if you don't, you continue to keep going. You're not, I mean, it may seem like you're getting somewhere, but you're not in the end. You're but you're not. not. To do 
So it says, let. In 14, I'm so sorry. No, go ahead. 14, what? 14 of Proverbs 28. If you read, if you drop down to just one one verse below, it says, Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardens his heart will fall into calamity. So if a person continues to stumble over the same thing, is their heart really in this confession? You know, just saying the words isn't enough if your heart's not being truthful to yourself because God knows what your heart is anyway but you know a sin that keeps on running I mean like for instance not that I'm trying to gauge sin because all sin is death but if you have a small child that has learned how to lie and they all learn how and they're really good at it and you get to the point where you can't tell if they're lying or not anymore Mm -hmm. Sometimes when that happens, you have to not let them go like you're out of my house. Let them run the course because they're going to come across somebody somewhere, sometime. And it's going to get them in big trouble. And maybe they need to learn that lesson. Maybe they've not learned. Maybe it's not that you did anything wrong or that we did anything wrong. The person that needed to meet that little liar <laughs> hadn't met him yet. The natural consequences. Exactly. And yeah. we do have consequences to our sin. Mm -hmm. But we all will stumble over a lot of the same sins over and over. Um, I know I do. I There's some sins that I wouldn't ever do again, I don't think. I say that because our minds are weird sometimes. <laughs> but, Very dirty. Um, but, you know... In certain times of your life, you can fall back into a sin because it's comfortable. And part of that is just experience. That's what, how I see some of it. I, and what's really nice is almost in the following passages where it says to just let that brother go, that if that brother comes back mm -hmm. to you with, you with a right heart and yep. uh, confesses to you, not that they need to, but I mean, it says, yep. I, I'm sorry I did this. To accept him back in as if he never was, never was gone. Even, and that's yeah. exactly how Christ yeah. would set us yeah. to. Um, yeah, I'll be the first to admit, like, I'm asking these questions for myself. Like, I'll be the, no, that's okay. Like, my, one that I struggle with is my temper. Like, we that we are. are that, 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 that are not a sort of It frustrates um, me. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> we, we, we all. Well, not a school teacher. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They didn't force me. That's why I didn't have last session. They didn't force him out, but it was strongly suggested. <laughs> <laughs> there are many other animals. Copy. You, know, you guys are... Draw off after. <laughs> yes. And it's kind of a little bit like that. Like then you'll learn, I'm sorry, I know I do stupid things too, but I'll, I'll say my <laughs> voice words, like I'd say, and I'm like, man, I shouldn't act like that. And walk back up, and you can wait for me now. Not with you. You're not the only one. Okay. So, um, I don't know how well you guys can see that up there. Here, it looks awfully small. But you can at least see the pictures as I go through this. So in the in the top left, you can see that it could be a kid. It's, it's anyone. It's one of us. It's me walking with Christ, right? There's a, a crossroad right there. And, well, what happens, it goes, okay, I'll be right back. And down that crossroad, I'm going. And at the end, it goes, the next frame, it goes, I've come so far, but I've gained nothing. And it goes, let's go back. I wonder how long Jesus waited for me before he got tired and left. Uh -huh. And you notice at the crossroad, there there's is. the campground, yeah. and there's Christ saying, okay, let's continue <laughs> on. Campground, I like that. That is, my, that is one of my uh, witness, if you will. I walked away from Christ for 17 years. I was walking with Christ in a different church in, near Seattle, Washington, a little, a little Briar Baptist church. It was a little German church. We had a meeting. It had food. It was great. <laughs> I went back to, to Hawaii and caught another submarine. Stayed away from Christ for 17 years. Mm -hmm. Finished my career, got out, didn't go to church when I was in Washington. I came back to this, to Texas, because my mom and stepdad were here, Sue and uh, Bill. You probably have met them. Uh, they were here. Uh, my mom, after walking through a field, and she was worried that I wasn't saved, which obviously many years ago I had I had and I'd accepted Christ but I turned away that that little boy right there is me mm -hmm. and because of my mom because of coming to this church and I was working Sundays was like my only day off and I didn't want to get up and come to church but uh -huh. I did and one other song Ghost Riders in the Sky I will fully admit 
that song drove me back into church. And 10 years later, I'm sitting here. Not that I know much more, I, maybe a little bit, but, but the whole point is, is that's my witness in all honesty. 17 years, this story was me for 17 years. Well, oh, go ahead. The fact that it concerns you is good. You just have to do that quiet time, maybe, that Michael, Mike, Mike was talking about. about. Yeah. Where you spend time with God, and then he'll come, you'll get to know him on a personal level, and he'll address that. Or, or yeah. maybe it's quiet time, but it's quiet time with, with your wife, yeah. or quiet time with other, a couple, yeah. just a couple of other uh, men, or maybe another couple with your wife, whatever you got, you determine to be able to help you focus yeah. on that yeah. and help her focus on that, because I'm, I really want to say, Patrick, I've met your wife, but I, do, I cannot picture her. Has she been here before it, yeah, Monday night? Oh, yeah, pretty little there. redhead. Redhead. I did. Old. Okay, I have met her one yeah. time then. Yes, I have she's met her one redhead. time. So, but, you know, whatever works for you, if you've already got quiet time that you set off there, you're better. You're one step above me, 100%. But maybe you need that whole iron is sharpening iron. Mm -hmm. Thing. And for that, you do need a little back and forth, a little bit of this, but maybe with a smaller group or something, whatever you may end up finding. And, and Mike's main thing that he was trying to get to the people was to get to read, the that each person has to read the Bible themselves. That's right. Because that's, yes. that's how he speaks to you. And, you. and and you know, any of us that have been through it more mm -hmm. than one time, every time you go through it, there's something else you see that Absolutely. you think someone added to the Bible because it wasn't there the last time. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I read this thing 10 times and that wasn't there before. 100%. Uh, what was I going to say to you? I don't know. Uh, oh, your picture. My experience, the way I pictured that, would have been a little bit different. When I turned around, he was right behind me. Right. Well, yeah, and that, I described that too. That he was right you can me the whole time. you can take as many steps away as you want. Around, yeah. So that's just the okay. I watch, I read way too many memes, and that's just I. Yeah, so I, I download the ones I want that was, for that this. Beautiful. He's still I think that's great. Right. He came yeah. down. Actually, no, he, would I, been, I, he would have been walking down behind you, going, "Okay, are you done yet?" Absolutely. <laughs> so, anyone else with any questions? Miss Lake Tahoe, I can't remember your name. I know you've been in here. But I recognize your face. I cannot remember your name. Skyler. You remember it now. I probably will, yes, because I'll say it about. <laughs> Thanks, Thor. I, I like you too, bud. So, anyway. Well, I'm just being honest. You <laughs> are. Confess, you know. Miss Skyler, do you have any questions? Any thoughts? I like what um, Michael said a couple of weeks ago. Is like he said, um, sin is sin. It's not something that you can easily turn away. Like, it's going to keep tempting you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. it's going to keep trying you. And it's like, it's something that, um, like, if it was easy to get rid of everybody, it would be very sin-free. Right. Uh, Correct. We wouldn't need, yeah, we wouldn't need God, really. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because but, once Satan finds that one thing that you yeah. like, um, I don't know, I, don't, I, don't, I can't think of anything. I'll mix nuts. I, I, I don't know why. Because <laughs> right. they're back there. I just know that they are. Uh, check your uh, check my spelling on Proverbs. Yes, I know beer. it's not spelled oh. rightly, and I'm not going to push it. Um, beer. Okay, let's alcohol is a great one, right? Because that can cause so many problems in so many different ways. Um, but because of that, you're absolutely correct. So you, you that temptation is always there. You like I like football. I mean, I'll watch it. I don't necessarily turn it on. But what do you have? Like every you know every second set of of commercial sets, what do you have? Well, you got a bud, you got a beer commercial, and you got to get snacks. You got to get snacks, so then you get well, well you that know, food too. you know, with with these chips, a, a, a beer will get absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you're right; it, there's always that temptation. So always, always, very good point. And it's harder. Yeah, sometimes it's like Pam said; it's easier to slip back into an easier way of life, or what we may feel is an easier way of life. By all means, by all means, good point. Thank you. And, and two, I think the, the big point he made yesterday or what he was trying to say was he said, God knows everything we've done anyway. Oh, you sure. can't hide anything from him. Yeah, you can't. It, but we but, don't want to take him for granted. We know Jesus died and paid for all of our sins, past, present, future. Yep. But we don't want to take advantage of him. Like Paul said, just because of grace, do we just keep sinning anyway? <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> you know, you try not to. And if you do, then you simply acknowledge it so that he understands that we see. 
Lord, I messed up again. <laughs> and again. And again. I just got one of those tickets, by the way. So, bye. <laughs> See, I'm blessed with a guy in my life that is uh, drives me fast. I love to death. But that is uh, a pointer out of, I have a lot of same issues, but a lot. A lot and, of what? Uh, I didn't hear that. A lot of issues that he was trying to allude to. Oh. And um, without. And because uh, you guys don't get to see that guy, and that's wonderful. Isn't it? But other people do, including her, and I don't like that, right? So, um, but he's quick to point out his album. He's the drummer of the band. He's been here once or twice, but he's uh, he's he's quick to. I don't know. God talks through him to me a lot for mm -hmm. something that's weird because he points out that what, somebody just said it. He knows what buttons to push, and he doesn't. He, mm -hmm. Can't you see us? Because he'll see me get mad. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He just knows what pushes your buttons, honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so I know that. He's in place for a reason, and I like him around me for that. He drives me fast, but I like him in, in this position. That's good. Yeah, yeah, sometimes we need that that external consciousness, yeah. if you will. It doesn't, it doesn't, it does hurt. At times, you're like, yeah. Sai, would you shit? Yeah. But in the way, in the end, we kind of... Michael? Watch the Bibles. That's all I care about. Not really. I care about everything. He's on top of it. Jim, it's time 3-5, and I don't want to wait to the very end. What do you got for us tonight, brother? Got nothing. You got no, what? Well, you got nothing. What? Nothing. Well, All right. Well, then we'll go to your right, Miss Sheila. Nothing. I just you just listen. That's worthwhile. Nothing. I just don't want to. I like going around. Poor Jim always gets caught right at the very end. It's like it's like time seven seven fifty nine. Well, Jim, did you bring it? It's not. So I wanted to get him earlier. Well, I'm kind of like Patrick. I'm still learning the the. I mean, I've been here for, it feels like forever, but I still have my Catholic ways that are still, you know, I'm like, well, why are they doing it this way? So sure. me and him will have conversation on the way home. Like, I learned it this way, and I cannot get out of my head to, you know, this. Absolutely. Yeah, you know that lady that normally sits next, well, normally sits next to me because she sits to my left. Uh, yeah, same way, because Laurel was brought up Catholic. She was raised Catholic by her by her family for the most part. She went to Catholic high school. She did a little bit of time, and she stayed with all that. And then she went to FSU. She stayed in all, with all, all those friends. So yes, and then she still has family members that are that are Catholic. Um, well, let me rephrase that: a cousin who's Catholic and a sister who's Lutheran, so Catholic Catholic light. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <laughs> well, Lutheran, Mount yeah, Methodist, they're yeah. both Catholic light, really, yeah, in the end. So. Didn't believe, but, so but it's okay. And it was interesting. I think I've told this story in here already to this group. We were at um, the Mexican restaurant down there on Kaufman, and it was our wedding. So it was almost three years ago. Um, Helen and Joelle, that's my, my sister-in-law and my, my cousin slash sister-in-law. I was sitting in the corner of that big round table they got back there, and the two of them were in front of me, and they were like 12 and 20 gauges asking me question after question about Revelation. Thank goodness we had already gone through that class, and, and I was uh, semi-prepared for it. But that's because, as, as Patrick had made comment a couple of weeks ago, when he and I were talking, the Catholics don't talk about Revelation unless they need the fire and brimstone and stuff, mm -hmm. and then they get back into other stuff from what, what little I know. And, you know. and there's a lot of Baptist preachers that are the same way. They, they stay away from Revelation. Because they just don't know it, or they're scared of it, or you know, don't have a they handle on lose, it. They might lose some audiences. Sure. Or then you have the other flip side of that, right? That's where they make all their money. Because the the four blood moons that were what three, four years ago, there were books like crazy coming. Up. The four blood moons. It's the end of the earth. Oh, we're still here, I guess. Yep. Or like to say, we're not really here. We just think. Either. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it depends on who you want to talk to. Have you, have you read through the whole Bible yet? Old Testament too? No. Okay. Don't feel bad. I haven't either. Read through the Old Testament, and you'll you'll start to see what they did. Because when Christ came, he completed the old law, and we had a new covenant, right? Well, the Catholic Church and a lot of the the denominations like that brought the old stuff back, like the vestments they wear. Mm -hmm. That's all what the Jewish mm -hmm. priest would do in the temple. He had to have special clothes with the things around the cuffs and the robes and the hat and the whole deal. And you had to go. Well, to they the brought priest. all that back, mm -hmm. you know. And then, too, at the beginning, they thought the people were too stupid to understand the Bible. That's why anybody who translated the Bible into something other than Latin back then would get in all kinds of trouble. They kill them because that was heresy. You couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. 
Right. If you wanted to know what the Bible said, you had to come to the priest. Right. In New Latin. They, and then they, and they, they didn't have control on the people that way. Well, so little good. things they did over the years, but then everything became rote. You know, one to stand up, one to sit down, one to kneel, one to say in response. Well, you mean like, sure. like now, I feel like I mean, for lack of, I feel like a dummy because like the books of the Bible, I don't know where they are because mm -hmm. we never opened hey, the Bible. So. So, so Sheila, I know, but I'm just saying. I mean, we never opened the Bible in church because correct. we had the missalette that you. Uh, so, died. so let me let me confess to you. Is 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 confession's good for the soul? They say, I don't either. And I've been I've been seriously I've been seriously working, coming to this church, working Bible study. I've led Bible studies, all these sort of things now for I'll say almost 12 years, almost for a dozen years, and I still have to look through and find where some at. If, show, I know, your, show your Bible what you got on there. I've been meaning to get those that I haven't asked. So, them. so for, yeah, 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 we already put a copy of those on our phone. But, yeah. but, but I mean, my tab, half of my, probably more than half my tab, almost all, all of my tabs, they've either torn off or they folded over and they're gone. So I still have to look through too. Like I know this little purple one right here is Ephesians. And that's the reason I know where Ephesians is at, right? But so, and I know where Revelation is, and Jude, of course, is now right in front of it. It's like one page long. So, but I still have to look for them also. You know, you just you just know after a while. Al says go to the Old Testament. It's a great history book. I love the Old Testament. I'm a New Testament type of person, and, and my Bible proves that. Because if you look at my New Testament pages, one, well, there, I just got to flip to Second Peter. I put notes in here. I write all over and highlight, and I, they're, they're bookmarks. They're my personal bookmarks going back and forth. And I know you can't see it from where you're at, but you start looking at, at Revelation, Revelation from the oil in my skin, it, because I've, been, I've gone through here and I've gone through Revelation so, so, so many times. Matthew 24, 25, same way, because I've flipped through those pages so many times. If you don't know where they're at, please do not berate yourself for it. Because no, I, I, I look at him and I like to figure out, okay, well, he's at the back of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's wonderful. You know, Terry's probably been through it. Well, yeah, and I do that, yeah. Terry's been through it more than I have. I've probably read through in the last 18 years probably at least a dozen times or more all the way through, back, front to back. And I still, you know which ones I know? Genesis, Job. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, and Kings. You know where I learned that? Some song. From a movie. A movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Hasty yeah. Heart, the guy, he, when he got mad, uh, Ronald Reagan was in it. When, yeah. the, when he got mad, his grandfather made him was recite one of the, the books of the Bible. Yeah. So in the movie, he would get mad so, at the guy, and he'd say it over and over, so that's why I learned it. So I can, I can promise to you, I have never read the entire Bible. No? Zero times. Never read the entire Bible, book cover to cover, and I never have. There's books in there I've probably never even read any. Well, there's some I skipped now. Yeah, so anything like numbers. Yeah, numbers. I'm supposed to what? You said you've been here for 10 years or something like that. Well, when I first met you, you'd only been going, by time period, because I've been before I was even going to this church, Yeah. you'd only been going here like two or three years. Yeah. Okay, and you were already leading a service. That's where I met you. Yes. I don't know if you remember that. Yes. Um, and I was impressed with you then. You're not the only reason I came here, but when I saw you here, it made me feel, oh, that's that guy. <laughs> that's that guy. Well, thank you. So, <laughs> Boy, that's a little bit of weight on my shoulders. But, but no, no, seriously, but, that's great. And so I, I you know, I, I, you're, you do, you're, you impress me with your, with your. Thank you. Even if it's not a knowledge base, your thinking process of how you go through this. Uh -huh. you know? Thank you. And well, you think it really well. It's, that, it's a lot of that. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of that. I'll admit it. Honestly, I, I've told this to several of you. I've told this to, to, to Michael Howard also. You know, he, by the time I got here, he had already been studying for 15, 20 years right. or however long already. And he spoke with clarity that I understood and could follow. Mm -hmm. I cheated. I took his 20 years of crunching and learning, and I just followed on his coattails, seriously. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't any extra studying done, because there was. For a while, he was, we would get done at round table at 8 o'clock at night, and at 9 o'clock, we would go into his office. There was about a group of about four or five of us, and we wouldn't come out until 1 o'clock in the morning sometimes, because we just stayed in there and just studied more. And that was, oh man, I missed that so much, just... That small group, just sure. serious studying like that. 
and that's what the our my Bible study on Tuesday nights is really focused towards. It's more people, but that's what it's really focused towards, and and that's what we do, and and that's one reason why I'm that way. I I really feel because my biggest question to him when I when I started attending regularly was how did you know to look up the word you know this word love mm-hmm. it, you know how do you know it means phileo or agape what is how, what, why'd you look that word why up that, and figure it out that love not yeah. this one over here and and do that and so that's what made me start doing it also and it's those challenges and just listening to, well why did he do that I changed Bibles because of a Monday night I had a really nice if you see Laurel's a uh, study Bible it's a nice uh, it's the same same shade as uh as Patty's Bible, it's got that turquoise color. It's an NIV, a very nice Bible, and I'm not knocking it. I didn't like one of the descriptions that was in there about Satan of all things. And the next day, I ordered an ESV, this ESV, just because of one description. But that's just because of an understanding and a likeness. That is nothing else. You know, I still cross out. I know where to go. Just that, or that. I just he was preaching from the NIV a lot. So. I'll get that. And, and it's a it's a good good translation. I had an amplified Bible at home that was given me years ago. I didn't read it, you know, mm-hmm. but I still had it. Here, so. But oh, one thing that'll help if you really feel like you want to find stuff. Because I'm a, remember I'm still a baby. If you you get you honor me saying I'm a baby. We are I'm infant. Okay, but um, I can find stuff really fast now because I try to chase it when he's in the in the sermons. It's yes. Fun. And you'll you'll learn, oh, it's kinda of like playing a game because oh it's over here. Oh yeah, I know oh that's right over here. I know that second figure's right over here. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't give and, up if you can't find it in enough time. Yeah. Just go on to the next yeah, so, I didn't put it down somewhere else while I'm still trying yeah. to find it. <laughs> so if you can then, so I, I can get I'll I'll give some advice on that for everyone that's in here. On Michael's sermon days, normally by about 7 30 8 o'clock sometimes earlier than that but normally by 8 o'clock i try to have his sermons on the internet i follow on yeah i follow that closer than i do my Bible. and and, I, and that's I have, I have that open because i see where it's coming from and, then. and, and that's the, the one of the best things i can honestly recommend is to grab his sermon print it off it's it's a pdf format so you'd be able to print it off it, it no problems at all and follow along with it does everyone know where that's at no, okay, oh, so okay, so we're gonna see if this works. If it doesn't quite work, um, I wish you would have had that this nope. past Sunday. Um, that wasn't <laughs> given to me because I did not have a copy of. Uh, well, he had a lot of scriptures. He did. He had a lot. Yes. Uh, when I was watching it this afternoon, I watched it before before class. I was like, oh, I would have been okay. So. I'm going to see how well this this works. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Nope. Up. Uh, up. Uh, nope. It's not going to. So let me do. I was going to say, if you like uh, being able to find it real fast, because like I can follow what Mike, when Mike was preaching, I use what's called an olive tree bottle on here. If you hit the top where it shows uh, whatever uh, book you're reading from, pops up a, a list of the books and you can click on that and then it brings up the chapter and then it brings up the verse that you want to go to and just boom right to it top of your page and stuff and i find it kind of hard to try to read from a bible now that's why i bring my phone i like i like this one because i i feel like terry has little personal notes and mm-hmm. you, know, oh, you, can make, on you can put notes on your oh, really? script, uh, highlight verses or Okay. One day, whenever somebody finds my Bible, they're gonna have all kinds of. So, things. just uh, <laughs> as a caveat, as I as I'm talking, uh, those that are, those of you that are on uh, in, how can this still not get? Oh, there's one. Uh, those of you that are in uh, uh, YouTube land, if you'll please forgive me, I'll. This is for this. All right. So if you go to the church website, CowboyChurchOfInnis.org. Here underneath the calendar is where it's at. So you go to the calendar and you scroll down. And uh, what's see, today's the 22nd. So I'm going to go to the 14th. So this is Sunday right here. So you see the sermon and letters from prison. And so if you go to more details, come on. Come on. Sorry. It's going to probably look a little weird because I'm a, an admin for this. But anyhow, so you scroll down through here. 
So you, if you ever get lost, you can look at for the YouTube link right here. And here's the sermon notes, letters from prison, right here. So all you gotta do is open it. Boom. And it's everything. It's the bulletin and as we scroll down. Michael's notes. It's Michael's notes. And the stuff that you see in yellow is the stuff that he highlights so he makes sure he makes an emphasis during his sermon. So this is where you can get it from and, and see this. And like I said, it's usually up by 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there's times it's gotten later, and I end up having to put it up like 10 o'clock when I get to church because he's mailed it to me you know, a little late or he forgot or Sometimes he mails it to me at four o'clock in the morning, and it waits until I get I get up and have a cup of coffee. But but it's all right here. And every sermon that he has done for almost the past three years, maybe almost four years, wow. is on the calendar now. That's great. It's all formatted into a PDF, so any anybody and everybody would be able to open it, print it off, and go with that. So that's on YouTube. No, ma'am. No. This is on the church, church calendar. calendar. Church calendar. I'll go. I can bring it up again and go through it. Let me uh, close this. Yeah, I gotta go to the website. You just go to the so, date. So if you go to the website, at the moment I'm on the calendar itself. So this is the this is the church calendar on the website. Right next to the star. So when you click on calendar, in this case, this is the 14th that I have up right here. And this is probably being broadcast. I haven't double checked. Which is okay, because everyone can see how to do it. It is not. I'm not sure how, why it's doing that. Oh. My picture's probably over the Facebook. Well, computers that want to play with this guy. That's, I can't work one. You, you would, you'd be amazed by my home setup. Okay. Uh, I run two 36-inch... High definition. You got those nice things that hook up. No, there. like this, and my laptop, yeah. and I crave a fourth lap, but I don't have enough desk room. Okay, so if you look at, let me get back up. Let me get my mouse up here. So if you look at underneath this here, the 14th, the calendar thing, you can just go to more information, or if I can get this to scroll down, it should do it. There it is. You scroll down, and you got sermon notes, and then you also have a link to the YouTube. It's all right here. And it lets you, it lets you download it and print it off and keep it. I Michael made comment that there's a couple of other people that also uh, they'll print them off and bring them to church with them also. Or you can look at them at any time. Maybe just when you get home, you you want to study more on his, uh, you know, go back over it again and listen to listen to the sermon again while you read his his notes. Right there available to you now. The amazing part is they are almost <laughs> word for word, and you swear you never see him hardly look at his notes. But I've been watching him closely, so he, he does. And he does get off. He does squirrel once in a while, but he comes back onto it. Um, sometimes there's an extra page on the end uh, that he uh, see, that he puts on there of all of his references. I don't think this one has one. Let me get down to the end. So no, nah, there's no page of reference. But sometimes he's he'll make that comment that there's an extra page of references, you know, on his sermon notes if you look at them and they're there. So it's great. Yeah, it's I guess this is probably something I should probably do for the for the church and actually bring it up and maybe before church even shows up, and so you can see so other people can see how it's done. Just say hey, it's on the church website. I'm still working on the church website to put them up individually rather than just on the calendar. There are a few extra steps that some people may get confused on. Does that help? It's a fun place, some place to go. Yeah. You know? I think it's cool. And then when you come Monday night, if nothing else, if you've had time to look at them Sunday afternoon, you can bring them in and go, hey, by the way, you got this spelled wrong. Or I <laughs> so I just format them real quick. I don't do a spell check. so <laughs> I just format them and make sure they fit properly in the – the bulletin looks proper, and that's all I do. So, thoughts, questions? Let me get this back up correctly for the. Uh, that also helps when you need a potty break. You're like, oh, how much more does he have? Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Sure does. <laughs> all right, there we go. And let me. Uh, so what? Uh, what you may be seeing tonight, what you are seeing, is you notice as I put this in. Uh,
So what I'm doing is this shows up. So when we record this, oh, I got to change the video thing. Um, those that are on, online, as you guys know that. Uh, oh, you're more than welcome with it. Video Texas. He, they, whoever that is, I, I don't know who that is. I just their their tag on YouTube. Um, but they've been watching lately. So we helped out yet another person. So, so um, the the verses and everything you see on the side, I, that's what I normally do when I'm sitting over there where Ruth is at. I normally put those on because Michael does go quickly through some of the, and I, I put those on there so that people can look up those later on or figure out where we're going or maybe they didn't see it and read it. And they're tr where was that book at? <laughs> I do that too, so don't feel bad. So because I use them for myself and when I do that. So. What else you guys got? We got plenty of time. Um, I'd like to talk about. Um, I particularly have. I, I I find that this has happened to me many many times. Uh, on sec his Second Corinthians twelve nine reference to his power is made perfect in our weakness. Okay, if you can give me a sec. Give me uh. Second Corinthians twelve nine. Twelve nine. Yeah. Um. Yeah, are all of his Bible references on the on the bulletin? No, he okay. just had part of them on the bulletin. Oh, okay. He he had probably three times as many of his notes as he had put on the bulletin. All right. I think he ran out of space. Twelve nine. Six, uh, Rub a dub dub. Oh no no. But he six. said to me, "My grace is sufficient for you, mm -hmm. for my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses." So that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Okay. So well, who's that speaking? means to me, and and I find this to be true so many times, is that I expect of myself. Uh, I strive for perfection. It's, sure. It's and it can be a problem. Um, but I I keep that little voice in the back of my head that my father would say if you're going to do something you do it with all your heart mind and soul right you do it right you do it well and walk away proud that you did your best but what's interesting is to me when christ's power is made perfect in my weakness is that i've done all i can do to make it as perfect as possible and yet there are so many things within all that preparation that i've messed up or or got wrong, or eliminated, or didn't think of, and I sometimes will beat myself up thinking, well, you should have done a better job, but I start to think, well, you know, maybe that's the whole point. He, How can he perfect his strength in weakness if we don't have any weaknesses? <laughs> I think what he's trying to show me is that, yes, it, the reason I'm, I'm, now, I, I don't take this the wrong way. I'm very good at some things, okay? It's because he's perfected that in me. Sure. Right. Because it used to be a weakness. So I guess the thing that I find, find I find it very sweet that we don't have to be perfect. Right. And that he's got our back, mm -hmm. you know? We're going to fall. We're going to fail. Acknowledge it, but don't wallow in it. And I was bad about wallowing. See, to me, that was a sin. I was wallowing in my all my failures instead of praising God for all the good things that have happened. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that that can be bounced around for days and weeks. But when his power is made perfect in our weakness, you can mess something up so bad. And just the fact that you messed it up shows how it should have been done in the first place. Or you see the miracle at the end of the tunnel. It wouldn't have been. It's like Paul. He was sent to prison. If he hadn't been sent to prison, he would have never had the book of Romans. And God only knows why all the other books. If he had just been walking around doing the thing that he, he was doing. So that's why he kept. That's what he learned a lot was in prison. Was his weakness was made perfect. His power. Uh, God's power is made perfect in his weakness. Right. I'll agree with that. But I think we beat, I know I beat myself up more than anybody could ever beat me up. 
But I'm learning to forgive myself for just being human. <laughs> That's a hard point sometimes. It is hard. And then it makes you look at other people and they do something that you think is, oh, my word, why did they do that? How dumb can that be? Mm -hmm. And then you hear, you can hear God saying, and you've never done that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's given me patience with with uh, people. I, I had an anger problem at one point in my life. Um, and, and this right here gave me uh a lot of solace because that was a weakness. Anyway, that's that's what I've got to say. All right. Anyone else? Anything else? Dead times lost money, they say. I don't know. I'm not in radio, so. Well, what, what she was just saying, and just to share, when I really started a relationship with the Lord, started reading and getting into all that, and then you see things back from your life. Mm -hmm. And, and they kind of speak to you and what you were just saying God doesn't want us to go ahead and do it because we're no. good at it. No. He wants us to seek him first. Exactly and that's what I love. And I thought when I started learning <laughs> that I pictured when I was a kid my my brother Joe was about three years older than me and my dad went to the police auction and got us both bikes. Now, my brother the 24 inch got me a 20 inch. I had never ridden a bike yet. We bought the bikes at the police auction, brought them home. We were all excited. So my brother started teaching me how to ride the bike just up and down the driveway. Uh -huh. You know, hold and then Dad would come and he'd, you know, hold the back of the seat yeah. with you and all that. Well, after I got pretty good at doing the bike like that, you know, we were on the sidewalk. My dad was running behind me, holding onto the seat, and I'm like, mm -hmm. Yeah, let go. Let go. I got it. I got it. Let go. I had never turned a corner. <laughs> I get to the corner. And you didn't. And, and, and up in Detroit, every house had one of those huge elm trees. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And at the corner, when you turned, hers was right around the corner. And she had one of those red hedges mm -hmm. with those little thorns in them, uh -huh. little tiny red leaves, yeah. all trimmed. And I turned and I went up the tree and rolled back to the bushes and fell over. <laughs> And and after I started to, I said, okay, God, I get it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like we do that yeah, after things go. are good. Let go. You say, okay, God, I got it. Mm -hmm. They don't know. Yeah. I want to be with you in everything. I mean, right. I got to the point where I would ask him if I was going to go out and eat today. <laughs> after I, I'd say, where should I go? No, oh, you you got something for me? Like mm -hmm. I didn't know if he had me to like meet somebody um, or you know somebody um, can put somebody sure. for you to share sure. with or something. Where should I go? Yeah. Uh, where should I go? And, uh, anyway, but, so we get pictures of stuff that we learn later. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of like when kids, uh, well, when we grow up, we found, find out that our parents weren't as stupid as they thought they This were. is very true. So, now, now uh, okay, that, that was pretty smart back then. Yeah. <laughs> and I catch myself saying the same things that my dad used oh. to say to me. And I hated hearing it the oh, time he said it. So now I catch myself saying it. Mm -hmm. like, Yep. My uh, my 19 year old just had that epiphany that you know older older people because some coworker of his is about my age or you know there and oh that that guy he, he really knows a lot he's he's pretty smart I guess my mom looked at it because he lives there my mom looked at it and said and your dad is how old <laughs> the exact same age so. and of course then it got repeated to me and then he said the same thing in front of me and said hmm. I wonder where you've heard that before. <laughs> All right. What else? Got any questions? Can't have all the. I like that story. Yeah. Just comment to that to the last thing about weakness. Uh, yes, sir. Is I, I found it. Was, that rare as well. I love that about mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, Send it over to Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. And uh, it's talking about the line right before it. He does not heed. God does not. Faint the world weary, his understanding is unsearchable. It says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall, shall faint and be weary, and young men shall be shall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And just right across the page of Stone, this is read, Fear not, for I am with you. 
be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That was a 4110. Right across the way. Yeah, we just, we miss so many blessings because we're so stubborn. Yeah, we try to hold everything to ourselves. So we're so stubborn and we also try to do it ourselves. Yeah. And we let the world freaking just simply turn our eyes away yeah, from things. Absolutely. We can do it all by the last line in, in, in Corinthians, because we talk about that, you know, about the weaknesses uh, made, his power is made perfect in weakness. But the last of that, uh, that particular, well, 12 right there, that, this is 10, I suppose, for the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Mm -hmm. For when yeah. I am weak, then I am strong. That's Bring right. it on, baby, because yeah. the Lord's going to protect me. Yeah. 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 And if there's anyone, I, I know I would not be able to survive what Paul went through. Not even half, not even a, a bit of what Paul went through. I couldn't be confined. The, like the first that. beating of 39 out of 40, and I'm thinking, mm, yeah, that's a lot. you know, so, I don't want to, I don't want to test that. So. Well, and the funny thing is, though, when you, because just recently I, we were going over that, I'll be, the, what, what, he got said to Cornelius. Cornelius, no, who was the one he went to to get the scales off his eyes? We, we were talking about yeah, that last, last week. Yeah, Ananias. It was yes. It Ananias. was Cornelius. God said. Ananias. God said, Ananias. yeah, I need to tell him what he's going to have to suffer to serve me. So he told he, they, he told him ahead of time. Yep. What was going to happen? And Paul still went did it. That's when you think about that. It wasn't like he it happened and he said I'm going to keep going. Yep. He knew ahead of time. Yep. Um, before we go much further, if you ever wonder what that clunk is that you just heard, um, it will start changing more and more as the season goes. It is the lights coming on. Those are the real lights shifting so that the lights in the front of the church and around the church come on. It's dark enough now that they've come on. It took us uh, years. It, it took us a while trying to figure it out. What is that? We literally, yeah, we had people looking up in the attic we tried to figure it out and finally we figured out exactly what it was so, so if you hear that thunk uh which will happen a little bit earlier every day now as we're past the uh summer solstice those little relays coming for the lights to come on in the church there you go because i saw the look i saw your look on your face when they when they clunk and i was like i better maybe i'll bring that so it's one of those mysteries it's a it's a deuteronomy 29 29 all mysteries belong. All mysteries belong to the Lord until He gives them to us. Well, he, he, that belonged to Him for a lot of weeks. So. Anyhow, anything else tonight? Well, if there's no other questions or anything tonight, then we can wrap it up. We're six minutes past the hour. Oh my goodness, we've gone six minutes over. Can I read one more thing, please. But do I think the good? It's just kind of going over the story we're at hand. I like when this happens. I'll be going through here and just stumble one thing onto another thing onto another thing. It's like a little rabbit hole of my own, but it's like, I it's just, what? Oh, where are you at? Now I'm in Philippians. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of flipped over here. Oh, that's what am I highlighted here? Oh, well, this is good. Um, it's uh, Philippians 4. 4. It's rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your respect requests be known be made known to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there is any excellence if there is anything worthy of praise think about these things what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these and god of peace will be with you where did you stop at philippians what I was at Philippians 4, uh, started at 4, went all the way to the bottom of 9. Thanks. That way I can update my list. Yeah. And I can't remember when I highlighted it, but it's a really good one. So this, there you go. All right, well, that's it. The homework I'll leave you with is Romans uh, 10, verses 9 and 10. And with that, let's go to prayer. Huh? No, it's just the, this just for tonight. Oh, okay. Something for you to look at. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this evening. I, I love this this open form, this ability to just take take one piece and just chew on it and your uh, your subjects using your prophets using just people uh to be able to give your word uh to such a fallen world lord I ask for safety tonight as, as we go home while the the weather is probably blowing out a little bit 
we just ask that we can come back safe and sound. For those that are traveling, it should be Michael and Carol and all his, their family. Keep them safe and sound and bring them back home to us. And again, for the Bonner family, for the loss of their, uh, their patriarch. We thank you for what you do to us, for us, and we just ask you to continue to be able to walk your path. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What chapter for tomorrow? We are in chapter 5 tomorrow. Okay.